you might, it'll be on uh, Moodle under 211. That's probably was just the data. Yeah. Assuming I remember to put it on, if I don't, email. Thank you. Do your journal entries though, and then we'll we'll write them down. It's pretty straightforward. You need an entry for part A, you need an entry for part B, and you need all the entries for the year for each. So I sort of I do something like this. Approach A, approach B, do your entry to to purchase the insurance, and then each year for the life of the insurance, or what the, no the rental. Purchase the rent in advance, right? What is this? It's a little more approval. Since that's far water wise, I defer the expense I uh, have a prepaid. Yeah. Failure. Again. Once a year, they do it very interesting. It's once a year, not monthly. Real life, it'd be monthly, of course. Especially if you want some good money for that. Yeah, if you have 24 entries. <laughs> no, 36. 37 was buying it. No, it's not too bad. It's just once a year. It gets more stress. <laughs> That will change, uh, well, you do a reversing entry at the end of each year on one of them, not on the other one, right? And it'll change your journal entries on the one you do the reversing entry on the other one. Okay? I'll call it by that point. 
scenario you don't need reversing entries. Remember reversing entries, you don't, you don't have to do them. They're a choice, right? So it, it's either with or without. If I say without reversing entries, they don't do them. If I say with reversing entries, ever do them. If I say with reversing entries, you only do the, you only reverse things when it makes sense. You wouldn't reverse anything that didn't make sense. Does that work? No. So let's assume the company does do reversing entries. And they kind of like a few of these other and there, they turn the rating side up a little bit. So, might be useful. They might make sure you turn your side a little bit on the cliff, too. That's what you should want to put them on. Or both. Anyway. Okay. All right. You got to count the months between March 31st and November 30th. Five entries for both of them, and then the one with reversing entries, there will be three reversing entries. Right? And you assume they close the course. You close the uh, expense every time. Okay, let's try these things. Let's do um, the real one first, I guess, A. What would that be? I bought this stuff, what would I do? Yeah, prepaid rent. The asset, right? Okay. 
So it's twelve thousand dollars. Credit wise. So you ought to get that. What would I do if it's nominal temporary income statement thing? Rent expense. Some people would say that's not correct, but it doesn't matter because it's going to be expensed someday anyway, right? Yes, technically, it's all prepaid at the beginning. Okay, so that would be at March 31st, year one. Okay. All right, then what? At November 30th, year one, what do we have? We're going to have a rent expense. Credit prepaid rent, right? How much? So what you do is you take twelve thousand and divide it by thirty-six months, and take whatever that is times how many months was it? Eight. Eight. Okay. Eight. Everybody agree? March thirty-first to November thirtieth. Be careful. It's March first, November thirtieth. It's nine months. Always watch for that. Okay. It'll hang you up. It drives and it drives you crazy. You hear everything right, and it's all wrong. So don't go there. Okay, so how much was that? Two six six six. Seven, actually probably round it. Okay. So what we want to have is we want to have prepaid rent of nine thousand three thirty three, which is what we have now, right guys? And we want to have rent expense of two six six seven the first year. Okay. What are you gonna do over here? At November thirty. You don't want it to be rent expense, do you? Mm -hmm. you, want it, you want to get rid of some of it. How much? You want prepaid rent to be what, guys? Nine three three three. We just calculated, didn't we? What is that? That's the, that amount per month, whatever it was, times however many, many months are left. It was thirty-six months, and we used up eight. So how many are left? Twenty-six. Twenty-six times the amount per month is that. Isn't it? Okay. Everybody agree? It's nine three three three. My math skills working okay for me. And credit? Great expense. Okay, now the big question we have to ask. Oh, by the way, in both cases, what happens to rent expense? Close. You close it. And in both cases, rent expense is 2667. Everybody agree? And you close it to retain earnings. All right. If we use reversing entries, we're going to need to do a reversing entry. Uh, so assume the closing was done, right? So if rent expense gets closed either way. That gets closed. Here rent expense gets closed, which is those two. They're gone. Okay? So what are we going to do on December 1st, year one? Uh, December 1st, year two, beginning of the year. December 1st of the year two. Okay, year two for the company here. What do you think? That's part of the fiscal year. Which one gets reversed? Will you ever take the the, the uh, using up the prepaid rent in this case here? Will that ever get turned back into prepaid rent? No. So what are you going to say about a reversing entry here? No reversing entry. Everybody got it? It's easy, isn't it? No reversing entry. Will this rent expense that we took out of rent expense and put into prepaid, will that prepaid ever become rent expense? Yes. So if we want to do reversing entries, can we? Yes. And what would our reversing entry be? The question you asked me that I couldn't quite figure out. <laughs> you know, what is it? That, that what you were asking, you were asking me to do it. Okay, what do you think? It's debit rent expense, just the opposite, right? For the full amount, it's gone. And credit prepaid rent. So what do I have in prepaid rent now? Nothing. You guys agree? There's nothing in it. And what do I have in it over here? On this side, I have nothing in prepaid rent. What do I have in prepaid rent here? 9,333. It stays there, doesn't it? It doesn't get closed. All right, so here we go. The next November 30th, at the end of year two. It's going to be for, it's going to, we did, did we do it for three years? We did, yeah. We did it for three years. Quality expense, everything in year two, 
we're not going to. We haven't yet. Oh, why did I make this entry? I got you. It looks like I'm expensing it all when I use the reversing entry, but I'm not going to. I'm going to make an adjustment journal entry, so I only expense the portion I should this year. Okay, stay with me. Okay, just a minute, a minute longer. What would I do in the case where I have prepaid rent here? What, what's, what's the balance of prepaid rent, you guys? Maybe it'll help if we do this. We have prepaid rent here. What do we start with in prepaid rent? Nothing. What do we put into it? 12000 12, Then what do we take out of it? 2667. What's the balance? 9333. So what do I need to do? Take some of that and turn it into what? Rent expense. Okay, so how much are you going to use in a year? That's 4000 12000 One year would have been 4000 right? So I'm going to take 4000 out of here and turn it into what? Yeah, so this will be debt or rent expense. Good. You guys are getting it, aren't you? It just takes pounding on it a while, thinking about it, letting it flow through your brain, okay? Uh, and take it out of prepaid rent. And we're in good shape, aren't we? Great. What'll be what'll be left of prepaid rent now? And of course, we'll close rent expense, right? To retain your when we're done. Okay, so that's going to be part of the closing entry there. Okay, so what do I have left in prepaid rent? Five three three three. What does that represent? A full year plus how many months were left? Four. Yeah. So so that is, that is 16 months left, isn't it? Everybody with me? It is, isn't it? And that looks just that looks good. So this method seems easier, but it's not really once you get your head around it. I don't think it is. What would you do here where you've done the reversing entry? Now what do I have in prepaid rent? Let's see what I did. I put I started by putting 9,333 in it, right? But because I used reversing entries, what happened? By the way, if you didn't use reversing entries, you'd have the same entry that you did uh, for uh, the, uh, side the side A. Yeah, for using a, a balance sheet account because it would have been still there and you just adjust it. That's why I decided to add something to it. So what we did then was we got rid of the 9333. Well, we're off, right? It's not zero. What should it be? 5833, three, right? 5332. Three, three, Thank you. I want this to be 5,333. How do I get there? No, I want, no, I already took it all out. It's zero. It's zero. See, we, see, we got too much in expense. Think about rent expense right now for that year. What do I have in rent expense? 9,333. I don't want that in there, do I? What do I want in that account? 4,000, of course. And I want this to be 5333. Does anybody have a suggestion? How about debiting this for 5333 and crediting this for 5333? And we got it. It's just like the adjustment you made here, right? It's the same adjustment. It's just with different amounts. Okay? So I'm going to put it into prepaid rent. This will work fine. And remember, you could be doing monthly statements. So you'd be doing this most likely with me in a larger company, right? Company very big at all. So this, this just becomes automatic. So you debit prepaid rent, credit rent expense, for how much? Five, three, 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 five, three, three, three. How many of you got this far? One, two, uh-oh, yeah, work can be done. That's all right, doesn't bother me. Might bother you, doesn't bother me. Okay, so now what would we do? What would we have to do uh, if we're doing reversing it? we got to reverse it, don't we? So, so we're going to take this be closed. This 4,000 would be a closing entry, right? And then I'd reverse this out of here. The 5333 three, three would come out. And I would have what? A debit for 5333 three, three here. Everybody agree with me? That's what would happen, huh? Okay? So right away, I've got that in there, even though I, my expense, I don't want my expense to be that much for the year. What would I do over here, by the way? I've got 5333 three, three left in the account. What would I do at November 30th, 03? The 30th. Yeah, this same entry. Debit rent expense. And credit prepaid rent. I take 4000 out of the prepaid rent. Where am I at? 1333 which represents that what? 
last four months, right? For the last year. So then four months later, really, but year four, I had a rent expense of so 1,333. Credit prepaid rent. And what have we done over the life of this deal, you guys? We took the $3,000, right? Recognized it as expense appropriately in each year, took it out of retained earnings, and took it out of prepaid rent. So we did. Took it out of cash, prepaid rent. Yeah. Uh, what are the advantages of doing it the way, the nominal way? Yeah. So I understand. There's no advantage. Why? No, yeah. Why? Yeah. It, it seems, seems like there are like dozens more than I've ever seen all that. Entries. Well, if you're going to do reversing entries, it's easier to to program the computer, and it's easier to train bookkeepers who always, whenever they pay for rent, debit rent expense, than trying to figure out how much is prepaid and how much is expense. You'd have to have a more trained employee, or you'd have a more complicated program in the computer, right, to separate. Remember I told you that sometimes you have rent receivable from people, and you have 3,000 tenants, and they all rented their apartment different days throughout the year. Imagine figuring how much of their rent payment is rent receivable and how much is rent revenue. Just read all rent revenue. How about if I owed on a thousand different notes payable on different days and different interest rates? What a pain. Every time I make a payment, i got to figure out how much is principal and how much is interest. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry, how much is, is accrued interest, interest payable, and how much is interest expense? Right. You know, you don't have to bother with that. You can make a you can make one journal entry at the end of the year to accrue or defer the revenue or expense, and then just reverse it. And then every time there's a transaction, cash receipts or cash disbursed, it goes to the revenue or expense account. That's why you do an anomaly account to save you an incredible amount of time. Right? Now if you only have one insurance policy, this looks ridiculous. Or one rent. Uh, prepaid rent, this looks ridiculous. If I only had one, I'd use the prepaid account. Absolutely. But if I'm renting, you know, 5,000 properties, and I started to rental on all kinds of different days, I don't know, I might reverse the entries. So basically, the nominal way all they're doing is instead of putting it prepaid rent, they're just dashing it in rent expense, and then when it's time for it to close, they just move out what's not supposed to close. Close that's that's right. Well, that's what we're doing. Yeah, that's with yeah, that's with yes, yeah, exactly. With reversing entries, that happens. Without reversing entries, what would happen is at the end of the first year, you put it in prepaid, and from then on, it's the same. It's real. Yeah, then it's it's real at that point. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So then it's, it's no big deal, and you can still let your bookkeeper put it wherever they want, and then you just leave it in prepaid because you use it up. So you don't have to use reversing. But then, still the bookkeeper can put it always in the same place. All right. So even if you're just going to only have to have a few uh, prepaid rent, you know, properties, be all right. You can do it either way. Does that, does that kind of answer yeah. that? Yeah. But it, the reversing entries are really handy. There's thousands of things in mass weather, even hundreds of things in mass weather, and they're all at different times. Yeah. So was that last entry on the, on the right side, was that a reversing entry where you debited rent? Yeah. Space? Yeah, when I when I did this and this, that's the reversing entry. So this would be December first, year three, starting year three, right? So I, what I did was I debited rent expense, even though we don't have any yet, right? Mm -hmm. And I debited it for too much, didn't I? Because I don't want that much in there. And I credit prepaid rent, and now I don't have prepaid rent anymore, do I? So at the end of the next year, what are you gonna? At the end of that year, what do you need to do? At November 30th, year three, at the end of year three, what do you need to do? Get rid of your rent expense of 1,333 because it's too high. Am I right? Everybody with me on that? Yeah. And then there's no year four, right? You're done. Right. Well, that'll that'll be expensed in year four, and I'm going to put it back. I'm going to put it back into prepaid rent. See that? The 1,333. And then what are you going to do the next year? Okay, on December 1st, I'm going to reverse it. <laughs> year 4. I'm going to go rent expense for 1333 and credit prepaid rent 
for 1,333. And what do you want to do? Leave it. Leave it because it's all expense. I don't have prepaid rent at the end of the year. And you end up with exactly the same expense every year, exactly the same prepaid every year on your financial statement. Isn't that cool? There won't be any cash flow statements on these. I'll wait for the cash flow until we have a Everybody hear that? No cash flow statements until chapter five, I guess it is four or five. If you're one of them's income and one of them is balance sheet. I can never remember. Five is, is balance sheet. Yeah. Okay. And they did the cash flows with the balance sheet. Okay, cool. Going somewhere.